Now don't get me wrong, if you followed me for a while, you'll know that I absolutely love smart tariffs, particularly those offered by Octopus Energy, along with the refreshing approach to customer service as well. And to be able to access a smart tariff, a vital piece of the puzzle is having a smart meter. This needs to be installed at your property so energy companies can track your usage of gas and electricity and then bill you accordingly. Okay, I get it. Some people don't like smart meters in case the energy companies can tell when you switch to Teleon, for example, or how many times you ran the washing machine in the last week, and quite understandable in some ways as they have had some bad press. But really, they're not that scary. That is, until they go wrong, and mine has. Stay tuned to find out more and how it could potentially affect my finances and bills for the next few months. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar. Make sure you like this video if you find it useful and also subscribe to my channel to follow my journey all things electric vehicles, solar panels, energy tariffs and much more. Okay, so that intro may have been a little dramatic, but as we move towards more smart tariffs, and even a smarter grid as a whole, it's so important that the hardware that goes alongside it works correctly and can keep up in terms of reliability and functionality. And right now, I'm not sure it can. I still hear a lot of stories about smart meter issues. And rather interestingly, Martin Lewis today posted a photo of a letter he'd written to Ed Miliband about the lack of reliability when it comes to smart meters. In the letter, he states, I'm writing to you about smart meters and to warn of the brand damage that risks making the government target frameworks perverse. A rethink is needed. Specifically, I'd suggest shifting firms targets from smart meter installations to the overall number of working smart meters, which would incentivize firms to do both installations and repairs. This is because too many smart meters don't work. The industry can pump all the money it likes at marketing them, but when word of mouth is often saying, don't bother, it's tough to shift the dial. I'm regularly contacted by people asking, what's the best tariff I can get without having to get a smart meter? as so many people don't have one now, are willing to pay more to avoid getting one. He goes on to say our latest money saving expert research, which asked people if their smart meters work, show 19% say theirs don't work. The reason this is so much higher than the 10% that the government are measuring includes everything people feel has gone wrong, including name home displays that won't communicate or connect, incorrect data on tariffs or usage, and prepay top ups that don't register correctly. And it seems he's definitely got a point, and my own use case over the last few weeks has backed that up as well. Let me know in the comments if you've had any issues with your smart meter having installed or if you just don't want one at all. And stay tuned to this video to see how it's potentially affected my finances and the way I use energy. But first, I want to take a little bit of time to explain what a smart meter actually is. Smart meters have changed the energy market drastically and have helped energy companies to understand how, when and how much electricity and gas consumers are actually using at any one time. This helps them to model and plan for future demand. Smart meters are digital devices that connect to a gas or electricity supply coming into a property and simply measure the amount of gas or electricity used. This isn't to be confused with the in-home display, which some people do call a smart meter. This is usually measured in 15 to 30 minute blocks and save a consumer manually inputting entries every month as the data is sent almost directly to your energy supplier via something called the DCC. The DCC, or Data Communications Company, is an organisation that has a big part to play in the role of smart meters. In essence, the DCC underpins the UK's smart metering system by providing a secure, standardised communication network that allows smart meters to function efficiently across various energy supplies and services. As I mentioned, a smart meter also usually comes with an in-house display, which can proudly sit on your mantelpiece and tell you how much energy you are using at any one time. Scary thought. And this setup is great in many ways. The energy companies get to understand from a large profile of users how much energy is required at any one time and can use that to optimise grid performance and the end user gets to see how much electricity they are using at any one time and can make their house more green by checking out certain appliances or making the household more efficient and in turn saving money. Not only that, it also has the added benefit of opening up a whole new world of smart tariffs where customers can benefit from cheap overnight electricity when the grid is generally greener and in less demand and also allows lucrative export rates for those with solar and home battery as well. And overall this leads to a net positive effect on the environment as well as consumers are incentivized to use the energy when demand is low and also avoid heavy use when the grid is under stress. Win-win. And this scenario has opened up a whole new world of opportunities including dirt cheap EV charging overnight and tariffs tailored to reward customers that help to smooth the demand curve. 
And when that all works, that's great. But recently, my smart meter stopped working. When I first moved to Octopus several years ago, one of the first things they did was install me a new SMETS2 smart meter. Now SMETS2 stands for a second generation smart metering equipment technical specifications meter. Catchy name. This is the latest generation of smart meter technology and offers greater functionality and interoperability between different suppliers over previous generations of SMETS1 smart meters. Up until recently, my smart meter had worked absolutely fine since it was installed. That was until the middle of August when this happened. All of a sudden, my meter stopped communicating with the DCC, meaning Octopus could not get an accurate representation of the energy I was using and when. And this could potentially affect quite a few things for me as a customer, utilizing smart EV charging and also solar export as well. Whilst I'm hopeful that Octopus can retrieve some of my data, or at least accept manual meter readings for the time being and bill me somewhat correctly for my usage, it could mean I miss out on some of the incentives offered by the smart tariffs and also get charged extra for charging my electric vehicle. Let's take a look at some of my data. Between the 16th of August and the 16th of September, I exported 570 kilowatt hours of solar energy back to the grid, which is when Octopus are paying me 15 pence per kilowatt hour, which equates to around 85 pound for the past month. When chatting to Octopus, they scheduled in an engineer visit, but have estimated that the visit can take around six to eight weeks. So if they cannot retrieve the manual readings for whatever reason, this could equate to nearly £200 in lost earnings. And that's without taking into account the EV charging by the time the engineer arrives. As many of you will know, I currently utilise Intelligent Octopus Go to charge my EV for just seven pence per kilowatt hour overnight. And that means I can charge my Tesla Model 3 performance to full for around about five pounds between the hours of 11.30 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. However, with the recent goings on with my smart meter, Octopus now essentially have no idea when I'm charging my car and I could get charged the full day rate of around about 22 pence per kilowatt hour. And that takes my charge from about five pounds to 16 pounds. So still cheaper than a petrol or diesel half a tank, for example, or whatever the equivalent is, but still a lot more expensive than the five pound that I'm used to. Octopus have asked me to keep charging the car between 11.30 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. just within that normal six hour window rather than the windows that they offer outside of these times and hopefully that means I can get billed as accurately as possible. And let's be clear here, this isn't really Octopus's fault. They're relying on the hardware that's offered by external companies other than Octopus and this is an issue for all suppliers at the moment. And based on what I've read and also what Martin Lewis has detailed in his letter as well, it seems like the hardware at the moment just isn't up to scratch. And it's not like they haven't had a long time to get this ready. Ultimately, it's a little digital device that measures gas or electricity. It shouldn't be so complicated really, and should work close to 100% of the time. To me, this feels a little bit like the Tesla hardware going wrong whilst I'm driving. And although the consequences of the hardware in a smart meter going wrong are nowhere near as detrimental as they could be in a Tesla, they should be pretty reliable now and this is letting both government incentives down and also energy companies down as well and from some of the comments i've had on my previous video it seems i'm not alone with having issues as well in the meantime i've sent a couple of messages to octopus via x and as usual octopus has been very very helpful and they're doing the best to sort it out with what they can so definitely no complaints on octopus despite my frustrations at the situation overall after all how can i accurately bring you my august statistics when I don't have a working smart meter. And also, if you haven't been put off by smart meters and smart tariffs, and you would like to join Octopus for their great customer service, they really have been the best energy supplier I've been with in terms of customer service and offerings, then it would be great if you could join using my referral link. If you sign up using this link to join Octopus, you get £50 added to your account. And I also get £50 as well, which goes towards helping the channel. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a follow-up video for this when I do finally get my smart meter back up and running again. And as mentioned, let me know if you've experienced similar issues as well. I always try to provide the full picture on this channel, and that includes negative things as well. So let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.